Hi and welcome everyone. Uh, I'm very happy to be able to be here with you, even if only in a virtual format. My name is Ildiko Vancha. I work for the uh, OpenStack Foundation as Ecosystem Technical Lead. And among a lot of other things, I'm a co-leader of the um, OSF Edge Computing Group. And today I'm sitting here with uh, active uh, participants of this group. And for the interest of time, I'm asking the, the panelists to introduce themselves uh, when it's their turn to, uh, to speak. So uh, today we will talk about the, uh, this EDGE working group um, and giving you some updates and also just kind of um, explore a bit uh, this topic of EDGE computing because it's still a really hot topic these days. But before um, going into the uh, the questions part of the panel. Let me quickly introduce you uh, what this OSF Edge Computing Group is because you may have not heard of it before. Um, so this is a top level working group um, which is supported by the OpenStack Foundation. Our um, vision and mission is really to um, understand the edge computing um, space better and um, help um, all the industries and all the groups in the open source space um, to be able to fill gaps and provide solutions um, for edge computing use cases. So what we started with a few years ago is to um, collect um, these use cases, to uh, analyze them for requirements, to understand what they really need um, in order to be um, successful. And once we had a better understanding, we started to work on reference architecture models and uh, also uh, strategies to test and evaluate these, uh, these architectures. Um, so you can see that this working group really is operating on a higher uh, abstraction level. We are trying to cover the infrastructure as a service layer, um, but we are not exclusive to any technology or any industry segment. If you would like to check out more details about the working group, then uh, you can um, check out the link of the wiki page that is listed on the slide. Um, so take a screenshot or um, access the, the slide deck after the session. And uh, I would like to also point you to the, uh, the two white papers that the working group published. Um, the second one just came out um, a few months ago. Um, if you read them um, in order, in chronological order, then um, you will get uh, kind of the basics of edge computing and cloud edge computing, um, as we call the area that we got a deeper dive into. And the second white paper is going into details on these reference architecture models that I already talked about. Um, so how do these look like? Um, so as for the reference architecture models, uh, what we found is that there is no one size fits all solution when it comes to edge. Um, the environments are growing organically and uh, the use cases are also just different enough that your edge is always different from mine, which means that my architecture will probably slightly different from yours as well. Um, but we kind of tried to um, analyze the options a bit and we were focusing on some error models. And in that sense, uh, we took a closer look at um, connectivity, which is crucial when it comes to geographically distributed systems. Um, so what we found is that um, if you look into what happens when the connection is lost between um, a central data center and the edge site, then there's one big question um, that people usually ask is that how much autonomy you need um, at the edge site? Um, do you need all functions to be available or is it enough for you if your workloads are still running and the site will resynchronize once the connection is built up? So based on these um, circumstances, as well as requirements, we came up with two models, the centralized and the distributed control plane model. And you can find the diagrams on the slide, as well as on the wiki page um, that is listed on the slide. So um, the question is whether um, 
these models are uh, covering um, all the needs out there, or maybe you have a third model or, or something new that we haven't looked into yet. If, if that is the case, then um, I would like to encourage you to reach out to the group, participate and share your architecture uh, model with us. And um, after this short summary, I would like to um, turn to David and um, ask him what he um, observed and thinks about the, uh, the evolution of edge architectures. And uh, David, what do you think? Uh, the two models that I just briefly described, um, do they cover um, all the, the needs and solutions out there or we have more work to do? David Patterson with uh, Dell. I'm a senior principal software engineer. I've been working with OpenStack for about five years. Uh, last year or so, primarily focusing on the edge. Uh, as far as the two reference architectures that we've defined, I think they fit a large proportion of the use cases that I've, I've seen, um, where I think there may be some growth is around the areas of AOT uh, IoT and where we get into um, more of a mesh kind of situation. But I think what we've started with uh, cover a, a broad majority of the, the use cases that we see rolling out right now. Does anyone have any addition to? Yeah, I'd like, I'd like to add to, to Dave. So um, as you're, um, so I've been involved in another working group that's focused on telco um, edge and uh, that and and we are running into MEC uh, workloads and uh, and the 5G workloads of course which are very hot right now and uh, th this this type of um, architecture is close um, oh there are there are some tweaks to it but um, I would say they're close where where we're getting some interesting um, uh, types of architectures is where uh, the um, where the ownership of the of the network is shared between let's say the customer and the telco uh, so that that's where the control plane might be actually in two locations one one for the customer and one for one for the telco um, but um, it it follows this it's just a little more complicated version of multiple and so that's where we have multiple components. Yeah, and I would say the, the biggest change we're seeing is the demand at the edge. Uh, like you mentioned VRAN, that is, um, this seems to be the prominent use case that's rolling out in the field. So, uh, and it's also requiring a smaller footprint for hardware and more powerful hardware at the edge. So it's, uh, you know, it's asking a lot, right? It wants a smaller footprint that is still, uh, you know, capable of keeping cool and very powerful, including accelerators and things like that, that are uh, demanded from use cases like VRAM. And yeah, think of it as mini clouds at the edge, the hundreds or thousands of them. Yes, and I think, I think this is a kind of new thing uh, in our thinking about um, edge that we, we need to incorporate uh, accelerators also in, uh, in the edge environment. And um, this also somehow shows that these two like clear architectures, what we defined, like the centralized control plane and distributed control plane uh, are not really describing all the use cases, but some kind of a mix of these two uh, will cover specific use cases. So I, I do really think that, that every use case will demand its own own architecture, which will be some kind of a mix of, of this uh, centralized control plane, centralized uh, user plane um, uh, architectures or strategies based on uh, what kind of um, uh, data you do you need to synchronize in the different edge cloud uh, locations and based on uh, what kind of behavior is expected in case of network um, uh, breakage, this, uh, the situation, what your Deco just described. Sounds great. Um, does anyone have any more addition to this question? Then we can move on. So uh, as you could hear, um, that um, our panelists were mentioning um, a couple of use cases 
And um, it's clearly shown that is really important. It is really important to to understand these to be able to come up with uh, solutions. And the best way to do this is uh, by collaboration and collaborating with other groups in the uh, the wide industry as well as in the open source ecosystem. Um, Beth, um, two things. Could you also quickly? Introduce yourself um, and then um, talk a bit about how um, the OSF Edge Computing Group is collaborating with, uh, with other groups in the broad ecosystem. Well, thank you, Eldco. Um, so I am Beth Cohen and I work as a software defined networking um, product strategist for Verizon. And uh, I am involved in a number of working groups that, um, that intermesh with the OSF um, Edge Working Group. Uh, one of them is um, the soon to be renamed um, uh, CNTT, which stands for Cloud Infrastructure Telecom Task Force, uh, which is a working group um, or a, a task force rather um, that's come out of the LF networking organization and uh, that is that is a um, uh, a focused on uh, in general telco infrastructure to support uh, telco workloads uh, such as um, containerized and OpenStack workloads, which are the most common ones uh, used in telco uh, infrastructure. But um, we have a, spe a specific work group focused on the edge, uh, which is of course working in collaboration collaboratively with, um, with the OSF work group. Uh, and there's also a, uh, the MEF uh, uh, work, work group, which is also defining the edge. Uh, so I, I think there's no longer 24 edge work groups floating around. I think there's fewer, which is I think a good thing. Um, so, um, you know, it's really important to, to be collaborative about the edge because the edge is so complex. Um, I like to think of it as a superset of the, um, uh, of the cloud. So instead of, you know, 50 clouds, you have thousands of clouds. Um, and of course, the management of said clouds um, is exponentially more difficult. So we're really relying much more heavily on orchestration and automation um, to allow us to, to manage those clouds. So we really need those tools. And they are, in fact, being developed, which is great. We, we also have a connection to the uh, Kubernetes IoT and Edge uh, working group and uh, Cube Edge, which is uh, a Kubernetes-based open source project, what basically implements the centralized control plane architecture defined by, by uh, the ECG? Uh, I was gonna say, Beth, you bring up a very good point that uh, you know, touch-free enablement of these devices at the edges is, is uh, of utmost importance because you can only get so far shipping boxes with bits on them, you have to be able to you know, touch-free provisioning from the from the get-go is uh, is a key uh, point to success with. Well, you you still need to ship them. In fairness, you still need to ship them, and you still need to plug them in. But you really don't want to send a senior-level engineer out to do that work. You really want somebody who's is what are what are they called? Remote hands. <laughs> right. Any further comments to this question from anyone? Thank it's not uh, not to this question, but Dave's uh, last comment. So I would just uh, just join to this this comment, and I think this is where we need uh, to work the most: the the operability of the infrastructure itself, uh, being it uh, like day zero, day one, or day two operability. But we should we should build these systems in a way that that um, uh, all the operations are automated because we are talking about, uh, as Beth mentioned, uh, hundreds or even thousands of uh, edge cloud locations. Um, 
get back to um, Gergely a bit. Um, first, for a quick intro, and um, also to uh, maybe talk a bit about the uh, the container space, as you mentioned, um, some of the uh, the Kubernetes groups. So I think it would also be um, interesting if you could talk about why containers are such a good fit for Edge and what our working group is uh, doing in this area. Yes, so my name is Gergely Chatari, and I'm working in the um, uh, open source program office of, of Nokia and I'm responsible for cloud infrastructures there, uh, including uh, Edge, uh, OpenStack and containers in, in, in general. And I think containers are a good fit for, for Edge Cloud because um, uh, they have smaller footprint in terms of, uh, of runtime footprint and in terms of images. So they, they uh, make it possible to have a, some kind of a more fine grained uh, distribution of of uh, of load uh, uh, in the edge cloud uh, infrastructures. Um, also, there is no live migration in in containers, which makes things a bit more more easy. Because in case of virtual machines, people tend to have this idea that why we are not do live migration over um, between these uh, different data centers, which is I think not a very good idea. Um, and and uh, the working group started to investigate these, um, uh, these different uh, architectures uh, with Kubernetes. So now we are trying to basically map these, um, uh, these two main architectures that we define the, the centralized control plane and distributed control plane to different Kubernetes based uh, solutions. And, the, and in this space, we have, we have lots of solutions like this Cube Edge project that I just mentioned, but also we have uh, K3S, which is another project implementing the, the uh, centralized control plane, but also we have um, uh, the Kubernetes Federation projects, uh, which are implementing basically an API Federation for for Kubernetes. So this is one direction where we are going. The other direction is that um, we are trying to build uh, some kind of a hybrid um, uh, architectures where Kubernetes uh, and OpenStack are just different layers in this, uh, this stack. And we are trying to figure out what is the optimum layering of these different um, uh, open source projects for, for different use cases. So that, that brings up uh, Kata containers, which is, of course is one attempt to to layer in uh, OpenStack with uh, <clears throat> with uh, uh, containers, but it's by no means the only way you can do it. And and I think it's very important, particularly in the telco use case, because uh, telcos are heavily invested in OpenStack, and and while we are uh, actively working to containerize our um, many of our applications. Uh, I know that the networking applications currently are still a struggle. So that's, um, and um, of course, networking applications are extremely important at the edge. Yeah, so, so Kata Containers is a very good solution if you would like to have this, uh, this uh, kernel separation, what we have with, uh, with uh, hypervisor-based virtualization in a Kubernetes-based uh, environment. And I think that's a very important aspect when uh, you have constraints in, in, the, in the physical infrastructure. So for example, there is only one single node where you need to run different workloads who cannot trust in each other. So Kata Containers provides a very good solution for that. And, and that's important at the edge, again, because we yes. have the constraints of, um, of being a, a very small number of <laughs> nodes, and frequently one. So Gerge, um this brings up a good point is where can you identify some of the gaps there are for, you know, deploying certain workloads in containers at the edge? I know there's been a lot of work in containers to enable acceleration, things like that. Um, where do you think we are right now as far as deploying workloads like uh, VRAN, especially VDUs uh, at the edge in containers? I think it, uh, if, if you, uh, if you talk about these uh, these different um, uh, runtimes, for example, which are enabling these uh, these uh, hypervisor-based uh, separations, so like Kata containers, I think there is a uh, there are areas which are which are not covered by the feature set of 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 these uh, container runtimes. But I have to be honest that I didn't check the last like 
half year of evolution in the continents, but but for example, there is no no support for or there was no support for different accelerators and different um, uh, technologies like SLAOV and this kind of uh, things which are needed for for Vera use cases. So Cutter Containers is basically just introduces another layer into your container runtime um, uh, stack, let's say. So you really have a, a, a hypervisor layer, a, like a very, very optimized and very small hyper, hypervisor, but still a hypervisor layer in uh, as part of the container runtime. And you have um, a full kernel and operating system running in your container. So you need you need the the you need the support of these uh, features like SLAOV and accelerators in in the whole stack. So all of the layers have to support uh, these technologies. And and I've been finding <clears throat> that's been slow because <clears throat> so many of those technologies um, are still proprietary. So SRIOV being one example. <clears throat> and David, you can probably speak more toward the hardware. You know, the intersection of edge and hardware is is much there's less disaggregation at the edge than than you can achieve in a data center. Yeah, I mean, the, the edge, uh, the demands for the edge um, are requiring things like a real-time operating system, uh, offloading, uh, packet processing, things like that. Um, and we're getting there, but we're not seeing at this point, um, like operating systems having the drivers baked in right yet. So right. some of these products that are just rolling out from Intel, NVIDIA and others, um, the support isn't fully baked into the lower level operating system. So that's been a challenge to get those features working in either you know any kind of Vim, be it OpenStack or Kubernetes. So that seems to be kind of the challenge right now is the, you know, the performance demands at the edge and uh, being able to use the, the available tools uh, in, in our uh, VIM layer or IaaS. I think that's a constant trade-off of like obstruction versus uh, raw performance. We just have to find the right balance. Mm -hmm. Well, interesting, the CNTT group has added um, a new uh, orchestrator, a new VIM layer, which is uh, focused on the hardware itself. So it's a HIM layer. Um, that's and to deal with that. Um, uh, that contradiction. And with that, we are running out of time. Um, does anyone have a strictly one sentence last thought to this question or the panel? I uh, just want to add, um, thank you, Ildiko, and um, we'll keep on working on EDGE, uh, and I, we invite everybody to join in as much as possible. Yes, I think the conclusion of this panel is that there are some solutions out there, but even more challenges. And here I would like to remind you all that the project teams gathering event is happening next week. And the, uh, the Edge Computing Group is also uh, meeting there. So uh, hopefully see you all there to uh, come and work with us on all these challenges. And with that, hopefully also um, see you in the uh, Q&A part and talk to you about Edge. Find us there and also find us at this event or the project teams gathering or in some of these open source groups that we talked about. Thank you.